Hello guys, S2W back again as your average consumer with your casual consumers review. Taking part of Nike's sixth year into their equality campaign, their Be True to Equality, short for the Be True campaign, is back again for this summer to raise awareness to the LGBT group fighting for equality rights. In this 2017 collection, Nike has launched four sneakers to support the LGBT community. They are the Nike Cortez, the Nike Vapormax, the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus, and also the Flyknit Racers that we have here for a review today. All four styles of these sneakers were designed with some rainbow makeover, because rainbow is their symbol of their social movement. I wasn't particularly head over heels with the colorway, so I didn't try for them. However, my friend was at downtown Toronto and she was able to buy her size from the Nike store, so she lent her pair to me for a review. Apparently by the time she arrived, most sizes were sold out midday already, so I guess a lot of people went after these. Maybe because people knew about the rumor that these could be the last Flyknit racers to ever come out since they will be discontinuing this model for something new. Let's take a closer look at these shoes. First thing first, the whole shoe is made out of Nike's Flyknit technology, which is known for its incredibly lightweight and breathable properties especially on the racer models. By touch, the Flyknit is stiff and not stretchy at all, but the second skin free forming fit of this upper on this shoe is just phenomenal. The silhouette of this Be True Flyknit racer is quite unique as there are some considerable differences between the lateral side and the medial side in terms of shading. On the lateral side, we have a dominantly white upper with the first 8 colors of a rainbow, swoosh design that gives a nod to the global power of the LGBT spectrum. The color of this swoosh is so fluidly designed against the white upper that in my opinion is really the main focus of this shoe. On the medial side, the base color of the upper changes into black instead, with a bright pink swoosh branding that you can't miss. Much like on previous models, this medial swoosh is rough by feel, almost like dry paint by touch. Both sides of this shoe is reinforced by flywire technology, so not only does it provide structural elements to the knit upper, but also a custom adaptive and secure lockdown fit for your feet. I say this because the flat style rope lace that come with the shoe is threaded through flyer wire, so when you tighten up the laces, the flyer wire will tighten up at the sides as well. At the toe box area, we have a type of intricate weaving here with both the black and white knits intertwined here together. Much like on all previous racer models, another main feature of this shoe is the perforation. You'll see huge gaps between the knit upper on this shoe, big enough that when I wave my hand back and forth, you can see my fingers clearly through the holes. Essentially, if you have sweaty feet, then sweaty feet no more because this sneaker is so breathable that it won't be a problem. You don't want to wear this shoe in the winter though, cause then you'll be freezing. Under the laces, we have a very thin traditional tongue with a customized Be True Flyknit Racer rubber patch at the top. This tongue is extremely flat, so when you put on the shoes, you won't even notice it's there. At the back of the sneaker, you have a small pull tab fabric at the tip with the iconic 3M racer stripes layered right on top of it. As for the midsole, the smooth race car contour of this black and white Phylon midsole offers a street style look with comfortable cushioning. According to Nike, the forefoot of this midsole sports a Nike Zoom Air unit as well, which further amplifies the responsive compression for your feet. Like all racer models, this shoe comes with removable ortholite insoles, popular for its comfortable compressive properties. The upper layer of this insole is bright pink with Nike's branding at the back, while an overall green layer on its underside. Inside the shoe, there's really not much support. There is, however, a suede overlay at the back of the shoes that act as a heel guard and provide additional fit securement. Flipping over the shoes, we have the exact same outsole on every racer model. A lightweight rubber waffle also with diamond shaped patterns that will provide durable traction control. Divided into the colors of black and white, the midfoot area does contain a bright pink swoosh for the extra kick of branding. Anyways, because these are not mine, I apologize like a true Canadian that I do not have an on feet portion. However, just like other racer models, these fit true to size, and if you have wide feet, feel free to go up half a size. I personally have wide feet and although they do fit a little tight because of its hourglass shaped design, the feather light and ventilated properties have made me really like this shoe. I have two models of these racers, one is the no parking silhouette, while the other one is the Orca Volt racer I bought from the Nike outlets actually in which they both fit comfortably not only because it makes my feet look slim, but the midsole is surprisingly compressive on the heel as well. Price wise, these were $215 Canadian, $15 more than a non-collection racer model. 
The only reason why I didn't try harder to get these is because my Orca Vault Racer colorway is too similar to these Be True Racers. The base color of the upper of this model is basically the inverse of my Vault Racers, if you don't count the color of the swishes of course. Also, what I've noticed is that Nike has some bad quality checks on these Be True Racers. There's some discoloration along the edge of the knit upper at the front, like a dried up brownish red glue stain spillage. I guess you won't see it unless you hold the shoes up close, but it still sucks. I've seen online that many had this problem as well, so just a heads up. On this specific pair, the pink swoosh on the medial side have different tone intensities as well. One shoe is bright pink while the other is violet. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like this, especially with the importance of color in this collection, but I personally doubt it. My friend wanted to kick me after I discovered this though. But anyways, let me know if you were able to cop a pair. I'm seeing a lot of racers sitting on shelves now so it's quite refreshing to see this model sell so quickly. If you did purchase a pair, I hope yours don't come with a defect, and if it does, I can only say be glad that you probably have the last model of the Flyknit racers to ever come out. That's it for today, S2W signing off.